I've got three CSV files and every single CSV file has got different column headers. The position of the headers is the same, but the headers are slightly different in every single CSV file. How do I combine the data from multiple CSVs together where the position of the column is consistent, but the name is not? All right, in the first part of the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tease out the logic from using the user interface of Power Query, see what Power Query does if I happen to make a few clicks. And since this problem is a bit dense than just a user interface of Power Query, that teased logic, I will then apply it to multiple CSVs, start to rename the files and then proceed on from there. It's gonna be interesting. Let's just start with a blank Excel. So I'm in a blank Excel file. I'm gonna go over to the data tab and say, hey, I wanna get the data, first of all, from a file, from a folder. And which folder? The folder that contains all my CSVs. I'm gonna click on open and this at least shows me the CSVs which are there in that particular folder. At the moment, since I don't just wanna combine the CSVs, the headers are inconsistent. I'm actually going to go and click on transform data that lands me inside of the Power Query window. At this stage, what I want to do is that I want to work with the CSV, which is the first CSV 2021 CSV. I want to work with the CSV and I want to see that in case I were to rename the headers of this particular file manually to the headers that I would want, how would that query look like? What M code is going to be generated? And once I understand the scape of that code, I am actually going to apply that code to all of the three CSV. So that's my broad logic and attempt to solve this problem. So um, I'm gonna maybe rename this query to renaming logic and I will click on any one of the CSV, which is the first binary. I'm gonna click on that. A bunch of steps get generated and let's just start from here on. So let's just start to investigate that how the query has built up and then we will start to do the renaming. So in the source step, I obviously connected to that folder, which is nice. That led me to the three CSVs that I can see in front of me. And then in the navigation step, you can see that I actually clicked on one of the binaries, which actually produced the navigation step. So if I click on the particular step, you can see that here I have uh, used that particular path and the CSV that I have clicked on is uh, 2021 CSV. That's nice. And after that, uh, we clicked on imported CSV. That means this CSV is now converted into a table so that I can work with the table and start to read the data inside of that. And now the one thing that I have understood is that once I have the CSV in the navigation step, which I could have also seen it here as the binary. So this is where the CSV was. Now, once I get the CSV, in order for me to read the data of the CSV, the function that I would need is csv.document function. And that's what I can take a look at. So csv.document function is asking for the CSV and this is nothing but the CSV, which is actually the name of the navigation step. And you can see that right here. Now, I'm also going to use the csv.document function in order to read my CSVs, but let's just take a look. Once the CSV has been read, the first row has been promoted off to the headers, and that is there in the next step. And after that, we have a change type. Now, from here on, let's just start to rename the columns and let's just see what query gets generated. So the first column, I'd like to rename it as year, and that's my first renaming. And maybe the county, I can rename it to, let's say, the place press enter. Let me actually copy this particular code and show that to you in a notepad. All right, if you take a look at this particular code, it says, hey, give me a table that you would like to initiate your renaming on, which is change type. That is nothing but my previous step right here. And then it says, hey, give me a nested list. You can see that we have a list outside. And then we have inner list. This is my first inner list. And then this is my second inner list. Every single inside list is consisting of two parts, the name of the original column, which was initially date, and then rename, which is nothing but what we have done it to the year, and you can see that right here. And similarly, this was originally named as county, and the rename is nothing but place, and you can see that right here. So if I am somehow been able to create this particular structure of a nested list, where I have the names of the existing column as the first part of the list, and the second part of the list is going to be the rename, then I'll be able to solve this particular problem. All that I have to do is somehow try to come up with all the names of all the columns in all the tables of the CSV files, and then also provide in the rename. Once you've understood this, let's just go ahead and start to implement this, not just on one file, but on all the CSVs together. So from this exercise, what we have learned 
learned are two things, how the renaming happens and what's the structure that we need to follow. And the second thing, more importantly, is that in order for us to read the CSV, we need the CSV dot document function. In case you're liking the video thus far, you're going to absolutely love my courses on Power Query, DAX, data modeling, and especially the M language, which is where I break down very complicated concepts around data cleaning and ETL, and then trying to help you understand that how do you build or how do you frame logic to be able to build your solution on your own data. These are extremely structured courses, which is where I take students right from scratch, build up the fundamentals, and then we go on, start talking about more advanced, more complicated problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have left some raving feedback about the course. In case you're interested to take your skills to the next level, I'll highly encourage that you take a look at the courses and they will be super beneficial. Thanks so much. Let me just duplicate the query that I have done. I'm going to start the work. So right click and I'll say duplicate and I'm going to call this query as my data query. That's the query that I'm building and I will delete a bunch of steps that I do not need. So I'm going to get rid of all of the steps and only keep the source step because that's where I'm going to start to work with all the CSV files together. And these are my CSV files, the binary, the binary and the binary. Now, in the previous query, we just learned that the function that we would need in order for us to extract the data from the CSV, which is nothing but a binary, is the CSV dot document function. Let's just see how can we use that. So I'm going to click on the FX button right here and I'm going to say, hey, this is the column that I'm trying to work with. The name of the column is content. And the logic is that go in every single row and use the function CSV dot document so that I'm able to convert this binary into a table and start reading and working with that table. So how do we write all of that? Let's just take a look. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to try to use the function called table dot transform columns. Start the bracket. The first part of this function is the table that you're trying to work with. So I'm trying to work with the source table, which is nothing but the previous step. That is good. And then it says, hey, give me the transformation, but in the form of a list. So the transformation is go to the content column, pick up every single binary and use the CSV dot document function. So I'm going to put in a comma and because it asked for a list, I'm going to create a list within that. I'm going to mention the name of the column and then I'm going to say, hey, go to every single row. So each row and then in each row, do what? Do the CSV dot document function. Start the bracket and I'm going to put in the underscore here to reference every single file or the binary. Close the bracket and press enter. And you can see that in the previous step, we had a binary, but in the new step that we have created, it's nothing but the table. Now, at the moment, we have been able to get through the first problem that we have been able to read the data of the CSV. But at the moment, the headers are not quite promoted. So we'll have to promote the headers here as well. So for which there's a very simple function table dot promote headers, which I can use as a wrapper function around the CSV dot document function, start the bracket and close the bracket at the end and press enter. You're going to see that here, the headers are now promoted. Although the headers are not consistent as of yet, you can see that we have date DT, not even the date DT name, place and sales. And here we have year, person, cities and values. The problem is if I happen to click on the expand button right here, there are going to be many, many columns and the table combining or appending is not going to be consistent. So before I can use the expand button, I have to make sure that these tables before even being expanded have the same names of the columns and then I can expand it and the data is all, all going to be in sync. At this particular stage, it's a very good idea that I also start building a list in Power Query of what column headers do I want because my next immediate step is going to be do something with the headers and start renaming the headers. So I would want to provide what those renames are going to be in Power Query for which I'm going to maybe create a list. So right click here, I'm going to make, make a blank list, new query, other sources and a blank query. And I am going to feed the list right here. Now I will just explain to you in just a second that why am I creating this as a list? But at the moment, this is a list and you will appreciate that in just a second. So I'm also going to rename this query, which is uh, query one to let's say new names. And you can see that we have a list and the columns are in a particular order. That means the first column of all of the tables here in the CSVs, whatever is the first column, call that as year, whatever is the second column called that as salesperson, then place and then the sales value. So I'm renaming the columns by the position of the columns. And here is a list that I have created. Now, going back to our data query, this is where things get slightly tricky and even more interesting. So here is the idea that I'm trying to do. I am trying to grab the table, which is the first table, then the second table, then the third table. And I'm trying to grab the headers right here. And if the headers are not the way that they are, I should actually take these headers and apply the rename 
renamings from in this particular query that I have created, which is nothing but a list. So how do I do all of that? We'll actually have to start working with the advanced editor now. So it's just for convenience purposes. You can also work with the formula bar, but it's just going to be too long a formula for you to be able to see all of that in one go. So I'm going to go over to the view tab and click on the advanced editor and start working with the advanced editor. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to create steps. So I'm going to say that the first step that I'm trying to create is going to be, let's say, the names of or the tables or nothing but the CSVs. So I'm going to say that the table.promote headers function gives me all the tables and the CSV.document function gives me all the tables to work with. Nothing is changing at the moment. This is just a let that I have used within the outside let to create steps so that my query is a lot more structured. And let's just also close in the step because I want to make sure that this is working in the first place. So I'm going to say, hey, you have the let and to be able to close the let, we need the in. And after that, I will just return the CSV right here, the step that I used. Now, at the moment, the output should not change because all that I have done is I've taken that particular function and I've used that in the step and that's all about it. Click on done and we get no difference in the output. The output is very much the same. However, the output is now captured in the step called CSV. Next up is going to be a new step, which is where I will say that this is nothing but my columns and the columns are going to be coming off from these tables. So I can use a function called table.columnNames and that's where I will say, hey, uh, the CSV step contains the three tables. Please just get me the column names of all of those tables. So CSV and I am going to now pull up the column step. Let's just see what is the result that I get. Click on done. And this is nothing but all the column names of the three CSVs. Here's the first column name, the second column name, the third column name. At the moment, I'd like to draw your attention towards the notepad that we left discussing a while ago. And if you take a look at the notepad, in the notepad, we said that we need a nested list and every single inside list is going to have two parts. It's going to have the name of the original column and it's going to have the name of the new column. Let me help you visualize what is the kind of list structure that we are trying to build here. The structure that we would need, you're going to see that here are two, my two lists. These are the names of the existing columns and these are the names of the new columns. So let's just pick up the first list from here. So I'm going to say that this list that I'm trying to build the first input is going to be the first value right here. And the second input is going to be the first value right here. So pick up the first value from here, pick up the first value from here, and then build the first list. Then I'm going to say, hey, what, for this particular list, pick up the second value from here, pick up the second value from here, and then you build this particular list. So that's the structure that I would want. I would want to somehow merge these two lists so that every single value corresponds to the other value. Well, how do we do kind that kind of stuff? So what I'm to do is I'm going to go over to the advanced editor once again and in the advanced editor I will start to say that hey I want to zip the list zipping the list is exactly corresponding every single list item with another list you will see that in just a second so I'm going to say hey I'm trying to create the rename pairs uh, that's the name that I have given and the rename pairs are going to be created by a function called list.zip and list.zip, uh, I will input my two lists. My first list is going to be my columns list, the names of the existing columns. And my second list is going to be my new names that I have built just a while ago. And I let me just actually get this as an output. So rename pairs is going to be my output. Click on done. Let's just see what we get. Now, at the moment, this is what I'm trying to get at. So I need every single list in, to have two parts, the name of the original column and the name of the new column, which is coming from right here. Let's just take a look at this particular list. If I happen to click right here, you're going to see that we have inside lists, not a problem. If I happen to click on the list, let's just see what we get. So we have a list of a list structure. Let's just compare that. So we have a list of a list structure. This is my outside list that checks out and every single inside list should have the original column and the new column. If I peek into this, you're going to see that we have the original column and the new column. I click right here, the original column and the new column. Again, the original column and the new column, so on and so forth. And that is the function of list.zip. List.zip function can actually take two lists and actually combine corresponding items of that two lists and make it into a single list. I hope that was clear once you took a look at it. Now, now that we have most parts of 
the formula that we are trying to build. The last part is just going to be apply the renaming and we are good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we now would like to apply the rename and we have already got the rename pairs. So I'm going to say rename CSVs and this is going to be nothing but table dot rename columns. If you take a look at my formula, the formula that we have used here is table dot rename columns. The formula asks you, hey, give me the tables to work with. In our case, the tables are right here, which are nothing but the CSVs. Then it says, give me the nested list to work with, which is where you have the name and the rename. And that is nothing but the rename pairs. I think we are sorted. So I'm going to go ahead and say table dot rename columns and table dot rename columns. The first part is the table, which is nothing but my CSV. The second part is going to be nothing but the rename pairs, which is nothing but the nested list. I think we are sorted. I'm going to call out this particular step. So control C on that, control V on that. Uh, let me just delete that. That. So control V on that and I'm going to click on done. We again get a table, but this time the column names must have changed. So you take a look year salesperson place and sales value. Nice uh, year salesperson place and sales value. That's nice. And again, year salesperson place and sales value. Now, now, if you happen to click on the expand button, this is going to work just fine. But don't leave the video just yet. There are two more things which I would want to talk about, which are help you omit the errors just in case they creep in. So if I assume that the CSVs that we were working with right here get anything more than four columns of data. So we are sure that the four columns of the data are going to be in a certain order. But for some reason, you get the fifth column right here. Then we want something to be done with the fifth column because the fifth column doesn't exist in this particular list. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. I'm going to go back to the table dot renames column function and put in a comma and I'm going to say just in case the column names are missing, there are extra columns that I haven't provided the renames for, please ignore them. So I will just say missing field dot ignore. That's what I'm going to say. And this is going to be good to go. And I'm going to click on done. This makes no change to the query that we have done. The query works just fine at the moment. Rather than actually clicking on the expand button, I will just combine the data off of three tables. How do I do that? I'm going to make a new step. And before that, I can rename this step to renames and I'm going to make a new step. From the new step, I just want to extract the content column. So square bracket content, press enter. This converts into a list and the list contains three tables. And now I can use the table.combine function. So table.combine, combine the three tables in the list, close the bracket and press enter. And the three tables are beautifully combined. You can apply the data types, load this data into Excel and you are all good to go. The next time you get the next CSV and no matter what the column names are, till the time they are in that specific order, the column names are going to be renamed and combined automatically. Hey.